Salute, Jacques Cartier here, to tell you how it came to pass that Canada, once a village called Kanata, came to be discovered <laughs> by me. Yea, others had come before, and they discovered a newfound land, but I was the first to sail along what became the St. Lawrence River. Now, on October the 2nd, 1535, I came to a place, a, a, a mount in the middle of the river, that the, the, the native, the Huron, they called it a, uh, a uh, Hochlegal, uh, something like that. And, well, we established soon a, uh, an outpost, the one uh, before that, at what is now Quebec City, ah, that did not work. But I was told by Donnacona, the Huron chieftain, that there were reaches in the land, especially near a place called uh, Saugine. So he took me on an exploration, but to be sure that the king would support future explorations, I took the chieftain, Donacona, back to France to meet with Francis I. And Though the chief was not all that pleased, he did enjoy the attention of all the strange people he saw, but it prompted King Francis I to further finance more expeditions. And eventually, it led to a rich trade in fairs about Canada. Ha! <laughs> we called it Canada, though, eh? It comes from a Huron word, Kanata, for village. But uh, it is no village, this Canada. It is a vast, rich country. And I, Jacques Cartier, am proud to have been an early explorer. Au revoir. <laughs> Fernando de Soto, here to tell you of my expedition through not just Florida, but with my expedition of ten ships and seven thousand men, we managed to find the father of all waters, as the native folk call the Mississippi. I called it the Rio Grande, it was such a large river. Now before that, I provided ships and support for Pizarro. But when it came time for me to, well, seek my own fame and fortune, I decided to follow in the footsteps of Ponce de Leon and explore Florida. And we came upon land and then traveled through many, many places that now have names like Florida, and Georgia, and Alabama, and Tennessee, and Louisiana. Ah, this was in 1538 to 1541. And there, at the headwaters of the Mississippi, I suffered from a terrible infection, and soon it took my life. But exploring through those lands from 1538 to 1541, why, I was among the first Europeans to put foot upon what is now the United States of America. And that's a story of yours, De Soto. Ahoy there, Henry Hudson, a band
London in the bay that now bears my name by my former first mate. Damn him, Robert Jewett. He always said about the indigenous people, we darest not trust them. I darest should never have trusted him. We were en route to finding the Northwest Passage. Yea, we had a horrible winter and many of us died. He may have been hoarding our supplies. But earlier, in 1609, we together explored a river of many mountains. It now bears my name. And yea, though John Coleman took an arrow through the neck, and we had to fire our cannon to escape, we found it to be a beautiful land filled with thick trees and flowers. My son John suggested we claim it for the Dutch East India Company. Indeed, we did. But now look at my fate. Here, in what's called Hudson's Bay. But along the river that I explored, it became a colony of the New Netherlands, and later a colony of Great Britain, and then a state, part of the United States. And that river, why, it's majestic, mysterious, launched the American Revolution, a revolution in industry, in art, and in the environment. And though my fate, ha, ah, to be cast away, maybe to appear in the Catskill Mountains, in a game of nine pins, drinking some strange brew, whatever it is, at least I know fate of my explorations opened up lands for many, many people. Now, to live. That's one of many stories concerning Henry Hudson. Uh, where should I go?